Okay, so we're going to give this a try in terms of um, taking a sky from one image and merging it with another image. And we're going to have to use a couple of things in picture window, the mask tool and the transformation called composite, which takes an input image and an overlay image and then blends it and ends up with um, a new image. So the first thing we want to do, if we combine these two images as they are now, this image will just overlay all of this image. We just want it to overlay the sky. So the quickest way I can pick that sky, and you notice all the little tree leaves and edges and things like that because it's a bit of an uneven edge. When I go to the mask tool and I look at all the freehand tools and the shape tools, those uh, probably would not work or would take me too long to try and trim around all of the trees. But certainly one of the things I can do is use the color range tool to get started. Now, this is a little tricky to get started. First, you click in the color you want to pick. You'll notice here over on the tools in the hue, saturation, and value. Had to think about that for a second. Uh, the HSV uh, scales, there are the indicators of the hue, the type of blue, the, the amount of blue, the saturation from white to solid, and the value, the value from um, black to uh, a pale version of that image. And that's the color blue that we picked. I want to contract the tool, and you'll see these little sliders, black and white sliders, have contracted to, to exactly where we clicked on the image to that color blue, and I'm going to apply a mask based on that color. Well, since I've picked on one pixel, that's as big as the image is to begin with. What I need to do now is hold the shift key down, click with the mouse and drag over top of the blue in the sky, and you'll see what's happened is the sliders on the tool have widened over the range of the blues that I picked in the main image. Now I can apply that, and you start to see that the mask is taking shape. Now I need to just shift click and drag over more of the color, being careful not to hit the trees, and applying and just double checking to make sure that I'm getting all of the colors that I want. I'm not going to worry about, you can see we've got lots of blue down here, obviously reflected sky in the lake. It's quite a different shade, so I should be okay, but even if I pick some of those, we can just eliminate that from the mask later. So I'll continue to just click and drag and apply and this is going to work pretty well, I would think. I'm going to come down here into this very bright part. And even more. Now, don't be afraid to zoom in. Maybe a few times. I'm right-clicking on the image. And then holding the Alt key down, I can click and drag around in the image. Click back on the Mask tool. Shift, click, and drag until I'm really sure I'm getting all of the pixels that I want of the sky. Zoom out to fit the screen, see how I'm doing. Now you see we've picked up some of the stuff down here and in the trees. So what I'm going to do is turn the mask filter to just the mask and I can actually see really clearly now where I'm picking up stuff uh, out, there's the sky and then there's the stuff I don't want. So what I'm going to pick on these uh, buttons up here control if I'm adding to the mask or subtracting from the mask as I use a tool. And I'm going to use a freehand tool and really just roughly outline all of the areas here. I can go right outside of the image border, come swooping around, right over to the right hand side again. You'll see where my cursor is. and I'm going to let go and it will eliminate those parts inside the circle that I've selected from the mask. Now there's a couple of annoying spots up here that weren't selected, so I'm going to go back to the Add and just draw a circle roughly around those, and they are now added to the mask. I can go back to the semi-transparent mask overlay, and uh, we're going to add a feather, one, yeah, we have one pixel if I can. Now I'm going to zoom in before I do that again, just to be sure that we see the effect. Feathering, of course, 
uh, softens the transition from selected to non-selected. So I'm going to apply that. Just keep your eyes on the on the small pixels here. It should just soften a little bit. And I can hit that one more time. You can see there's a slight bit of pink showing up over there. So there is a transition now between the mask uh, areas and the non-masked areas. So I've selected that image. I'm going to keep that active and bring my sky to the forefront. And this is where it gets good. Click on the image you want to add the new sky to. The mask is already applied. I'm going to go to the Transformation menu, Composite. You can see our input image is already here, and the mask is already selected. So anything I'm going to add as an overlay will only be added to the white area of the image. My overlay is going to be the skyline image. So I pick that from the image list. And if I hit Auto Now, Auto Preview, you can see even if they're mismatched, there's the new image showing up. But it's not wide enough to cover the entire sky. That's because I've got an alignment down here of none. Basically just align, drop one image over top of the other one. And they're too mismatched in sizes. So what we're going to do is go to a multi-point image. And you'll notice in the preview that it's taken my original sky here and stretched it to fit the width. But I can also play around a little bit with that. There's some alignment points here showing up in my uh, overlay image, and I'm going to bring those up right into the sky zone. Something like that. And that looks pretty good. But I, maybe it's a little strong for the day. Well, maybe I'm actually even going to I'm going to bring this up a little bit higher into the clouds and just take the um, the effect down. So I'm overlaying it, but kind of fading it in so it doesn't seem overpowered. When I'm happy with all that, I click OK. There's the new image with the new sky, and you notice in here where the trees are. We're going to zoom in just a little bit. They should look fairly good. The sky's gone in around all of those branches in there and not over top of them because of the accuracy of the ma mask. This is a fairly low resolution image. It's one to one on this screen. And if I look at the info by right clicking, uh, it is only a 600 by 400 pixel image. So I'm not surprised the trees were pixelated quite a little bit. But you get the idea. On a higher resolution original, this would be no problem to get the sky to blend in around all of those mismatched areas. That's it. See you next time.